Hi guys, it's Emma here. I am back again on the We Are Tear Fun channel and today I am with Joshua Luke Smith. What's up my friends? So I was listening to one of your songs this morning. Um, broken Pieces? Broken... Bro Broken things. Broken things. Oh, that's from a little while ago. Oh, yeah, you 2016, went, right? You went into the, yeah, I don't even know you could still listen to that yeah, one. Yeah, there oh, you okay. go. Um, and in it, one of your lines, you mentioned that before the age of 15, yes. you had lived in 12 different houses. Yes, you know the lyrics. Yeah. Oh, well, I've been practicing. <laughs> True fan. Um, so 12 different houses by yes. the age of 15. Yeah. How, how did that come to be? What was your life like growing up? So um, I, was, I was born in London, born in Croydon. And um, and then when I was two, my parents moved us to Pakistan. Wow. So um, my, my father is a doctor, and they decided they they wanted to move to Pakistan and basically serve people that couldn't get um, the hospital care and uh, surgery that we can get very easily here. So they packed up, moved the whole family, and we went. And uh, and so for the first kind of third of my life, I guess that's that's that was home, and that was wow. that was what I knew, and that was normal. Uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, so we moved around a ton. We just were cons every year or so we moved, and that again was normal. So when someone would tell me, "Yeah, I've grew up on the same street," I, I that just seems alien to me. Yeah. That's what I so when did you move back to the UK? Yeah, so I was I was about nine years old. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the summer of '98, which was the 1998 World Cup, the big World Cup, it's where Mike Lowen scored an amazing goal and David Beckham got sent off. And I was in the playground, and I'd lived in Pakistan since then. And I remember saying to a group of guys playing football. Who's David Beckham? And at that point, I knew I had had a very different childhood yeah. than everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> but you got a few funny looks. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, had, I had a thick American accent because I grew up in a, in a missionary community, so with Australians and Americans and Canadians, and so my accent has always been a bit of a blend of a few things. I think it still is. I, I think I sounded normal in English, but whenever I meet someone, it's like, where are you from? Yeah. So I think I still have a bit of a twang. Yeah. I I grew up in an environment that was. Um, dedicated to helping people. So I saw from a very early age my parents with this mandate which was we're here to help and they did that radically and drastically by moving to Pakistan and so there was moments in my in my childhood where I learned very early oh th this world isn't perfect things are broken and people are affected by that brokenness and there was this one time where I woke up um, it's funny remembering woke up and went outside and there was a whole like I don't know 50 people Mums and dads, kids sat on our front lawn, Whoa. and um, in Pakistan, and they all turned out to be refugees, and they were crossing the border. And um, I went inside. I was like, "Mom, there's those people in the garden." And she came out and knew exactly what was going on. So, so she just started giving me and my sisters pots and pans and sacks of potatoes and you know, like things from our cupboards, clothes, just to give to them. They need it more than we do. And I think those those carrying a bag of potatoes to someone who's fleeing. From a country, it kind of instills something in you of like I can have something in my hands that can actually impact someone else, wow. and I don't think that ever left. I've I've shut it off. I've dumbed it down. I've pretended it isn't so, yeah. but it's in there, and I learned that from a young age, and I'm grateful I did. It's a slow awakening to yeah. you. Ha you have the capacity in every moment to change something, and um, and it's a discipline, but it's, yeah. it's doable. Yeah. So would you say that that's kind of what it's like for you to be a missionary today? Yeah, totally. I, I think we have to find new language. Mm -hmm. I think there, there was a time where it was important to have this framework that said, I'm going from here to here to help. What wasn't helpful was the idea that you're bringing something to someone that wasn't already there. Yeah. So, so what we have to recognize is in every human, there's something sacred. Yeah. There's something just perfect. And what you're doing is is letting them wake up to it, right? So God is everywhere. Yeah. The whole earth is filled with his glory. So there's nowhere you're ever gonna go where you're gonna take God where he's not. Yeah. And you're just your 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 role is wherever I am, I wanna help people wake up to what is already happening around us. Yeah. And so the the missionary of this age for us as millennials is saying, I am gonna be the most awake person in the room. Yeah. I'm gonna be a, be present to the wonder and everything, and I'm gonna be present to the pain in that in, in so much of what we go through through yeah. and in doing so help people see that this uh, this is a phrase I use all the time the story isn't over yeah like that that I feel is is the missionary call on my life is just to remind people 
remind myself this story hasn't ended yeah. yet. Hope can have the last word. So for those of you who are watching, maybe you're um, still in school, maybe you're in your youth group and you feel like you've got a real like heart and passion that you want to go and make a difference in the world. And actually that doesn't have to wait until you've graduated university. It doesn't. You don't need to wait until you're an adult. Actually it can start with yeah, right now, yeah, right? Absolutely. Just loving your neighbor, Definitely. learning how to Definitely. just put people first, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you know what the most powerful thing you can do today is make eye contact with the people you speak to, smile at them and treat them like they matter because that might be the one thing that they're doubting in this moment. Yes. In your TED talk you mentioned a thing about social media. Right. So you were saying oh, every day you ran the risk of scrolling yes. through your 20s, kind of that idea that yeah. we just get a bit lost in our phones, we yeah. consume so much time on social media and yeah. online. Yeah. How do you kind of manage that feeling of kind of getting information mm -hmm. from online and using that connection that we have mm -hmm. that is available to us through apps and through social media but kind of not becoming distracted by it and disconnected yes, with yes. it. I think at some point the conversation has to get really practical mm -hmm. because um, if, if you say hey the goal of my life is to end more awake than I am now, awake to everything around me, yeah. then it has to become a discipline. So for me, this is what, something that changed my life last year was saying, I'm not gonna go on my phone before nine and I'm not gonna go on it after six. Okay, so That's boundaries. Game, bound, game, yeah, and then my wife and I said, we're gonna, we're gonna have a phone bowl. So there's a bowl in our house and when the phones go in it, it it's like they don't exist anymore. Yeah. And uh, we find these spaces where we, cause the, the great paradox is this, the phones help us connect and at the same time disconnect in a very brutal way. So find the places where you're connecting with soul, with depth, right? And that has to be discipline. Yeah. I, and, and for me, it's waking up in the morning, you stay awake like this, you wake up in the morning and bef between six and nine or whatever, if you're a morning person, I'm, I'm a morning person. <laughs> Depends what time you wake up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have this space where you think, I'm gonna have an original thought. I'm gonna not fall into the comparison trap. I'm gonna think about what, what comes to my mind and dwell on that and pray or whatever you, whatever you do in the morning. And that's a, that is a life changer. Wow. It's a game changer. So my first encouragement would be, let's not talk about it, let's do something. So, so before nine and after six, don't go on your phone. Try it for a week. Try 24 hours in one week where you turn your phone off. Yeah. And I think we have to acknowledge that that becomes a scary moment for us because so, you lose that point of connection. But then it begins to feel freeing. And so now I can't live without living without my phone. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Like I have to just be away from it. So 24 hours every week, it's off. And I'm, I'm, I'm a free man. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. good advice because I think a lot of people would say, oh, social media is so bad. Yeah. We shouldn't use it yeah. at all. No. But I like that idea yeah. of kind of let your original thoughts, like yes. your natural thoughts lead you yes. first. Yes, absolutely. And then engage yeah. and have great conversations and connections. And oh, I love social media, but in its right context. Yeah, you know? love yeah. that. I think um, look at information and impact right so information should lead to impact mm -hmm. the more information you get about something equips you to impact that whatever sphere or you know yeah. situation and so i think you need to look at your life and say okay if i'm getting 100 percent of information but no impact then it's a real bat um it's really out of balance yeah. and you feel overwhelmed so what i'm doing now is saying i want my life to be like 10 20 percent inf inf information but like way more impact and the more that you you kind of discipline your life to say i'm going to do something yeah i'm going to do this act of kindness or compassion then the information finds its place yeah. but if it's all information it's all scrolling it's all blogs it's all like timelines and there's no impact it's just overwhelming because without realizing it you're constantly being told you should be doing more there's a lot going on out there, right? And so, yeah. so put it in context again. Yeah. Informa be thinking, okay, I'm getting this information. How does that lead to impact? Yeah. How do I become more me, more awake, more human as a result digesting yeah. this? It, it, it's to do with what's the desire that just doesn't go away, you know? So there's a verse, like it's Psalm 34. It says, um, delight yourself in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. And I think we don't realize it until we think about it, that you actually know there's a humming in you that just doesn't turn off, you know? You always come back to it. It's a sense of, I need to write, I need to speak, I need to care. You know, I just, I can't get away from that. That's probably how you're gonna export yourself, you yeah. know? And it might be, for my little sister, it was nursing, right? It was just, I gotta do this. And until you put that into practice, you probably won't feel satisfied because it's a desire that's been given to you. It's, it's a divine desire. And for me, it always came back to, 
sitting on a bus writing bars and just constantly writing and then realizing oh that's the hum that doesn't go yeah. and so that's what I'm going to use to, to, to impact the world and everyone everyone watching this has got a hum and you just got to recognize what do you wake up and go to sleep desiring to do mm. that's probably how you're going to impact the world yeah you mentioned quite a bit about your faith yes um how do you feel that your faith has impacted kind of your idea of justice wow so becoming more spiritual this is one of my favorite quotes in the world becoming more spiritual doesn't mean becoming less human and when i realized that i, I just felt so empowered to see my faith in action because sometimes you have this impression that becoming spiritual means you become disengaged from the world and it's the opposite yeah. the more that you delve into spirituality the more you feel connected with people in the world and um i follow jesus yeah. and 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 jesus reveals what god is like but he reveals what humanity is like yeah. and he reveals a humanity that is driven by compassion and kindness and he reveals a humanity that um, believes in the ideals of justice and hope mm -hmm. um, and puts it into practice and following Jesus means um, believing in something despite how it might outwork yeah. sometimes so when you stand for a cause and don't see the cause changed you keep standing you know mm -hmm. or when you believe in something going one way and it doesn't happen you keep believing and that process of of going through the disappointment even is what makes you more human yeah. as a result of being empowered by this spirituality. I don't know if that makes sense, yeah, like no, a really abstract, but that's really it. It's saying, I feel empowered to be more human. Mm -hmm. So care for humans and care for the earth because of my spirituality and yeah. the following of Jesus. And uh, yeah, that, that'd kind yeah. of be how I'd approach that. So you go to mm -hmm. There'll be um, there's everything on there, music and you, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, you Joshua yeah. Luke Smith on Instagram, and uh, we've got lots of new music coming out this year, so Amazing. check that out. Yeah. Thank you so oh, much. Appreciate it. No, thank you and we having. hope you are inspired. Um, but yeah, check the links below and get following Joshua Luke Smith. See you Peace. later.